Buongiorno, welcome to the Manitas Simulation Center. Today we have a very special guest, uh, my dear friend and colleague Carolina. Carolina is also a medic, a trained surgeon and uh, um, from Argentina and has been with us in Italy for a while. Carolina, can you tell us a little bit about your experience in general in the medical field and then also your experience in simulation? Sure, so um, thank you for the introduction. As you say, I'm uh, a surgeon, a transplant surgeon. I've been trained in Argentina and uh, United States. Um, and recently incorporated, I have the honor of being incorporated in the simulation team here at uh, Humanitas University. Um, you know, especially, but not only for um, surgical training, simulation is extremely important. I've <clears throat> been doing simulation as a resident um, and then even a, as a surgeon and, and I have to say that it was uh, always a fantastic experience but I was surprised about the uh, wider application of simulation when I was incorporated in your, into your team. So I think that it's just not an atmosphere to uh, be trained as a surgeon but the applicabilities are extremely wide and important. You've been training um, students and uh, medics uh, during the last month uh, and you gained uh, a lot of experience or you have a lot of experience. Can you tell us a little bit about the advantages uh, of simulation for students and young professionals? Of course. Um, yes, I've been involved uh, in the fifth year medical student training in the simulation. But I can tell you that I think simulation is an uh, educational method that can be used in every single level of the uh, medical education. We start uh, studying medicine in our first year and it's a process that never ends. So even for high proficiency doctors, this could be a learning method. Um, it's very well known and studied that uh, when we see the impact of the different uh, teaching techniques into what is called the learning pyramid. The famous learning by doing method is what has the strongest impact in the learning process. And simulation is the exactly example for the learning by doing. It's an atmosphere where you are supposed to do while you're learning, where you actually can um, go ahead into your learning curve and it's a protective uh, atmosphere in which both patients and um, student or resident or well-trained even doctor uh, can make mistakes, are actually supposed to make mistakes, to learn from the mistakes. So it's the right environment where to, uh, I was telling you, um, apply the learning by doing. Um, there are many aspects that are very um, very uh, developed during simulation, like the uh, situation awareness, like the uh, decision making process, like the um, leadership, like the team working. So there are many technical but also non-technical skills that are absolutely um, reinforced by simulation. That's very important, you know, like uh, people, people really can learn skills, you know, like in a, in a safe environment and, you know, like, uh, and not directly on the patient, you know, exactly. like to do a first skill on the patient. Um, but I really like also this, uh, you pointed out the non-technical skills, you know, like to work as a team, you know, like to identify leadership and so on. Um, yeah, that's, that's uh, really good points you made. You know, I think it should be like a bridge, the simulation. Um, a bridge between your theoretical knowledge and your practical, practical knowledge. So um, I think it's the right place, actually, the most important universities and uh, medical schools around the world are using simulation from the very beginning, from the very first year, uh, up until uh, the last years of even uh, residency programs. And that's what we also do here at, uh, at Humanitas. We, we use it like obviously in the university, but also now in the, in the hospital. Uh, and uh, uh, we have an exciting program coming up. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about the upcoming year? What can we expect from 2021? Okay, so what I think um, 
it will happen is a more and more intense use and application of simulation. So as we are just saying from the very beginning with like anatomy lectures, for instance, uh, to um, training of already doctors, like for example, testing a new device that comes out. And um, as you were saying, a very important program that will be focused on residents. So in, in training, but already graduated doctors, um, in which, of course, um, they are just facing the uh, medical activity with real patients. So doing this kind of activity in the simulation center, of course, I think is going to be important for um, getting uh, self-confidence uh, before getting to the real medical activity. I completely agree. I completely agree. It gives you, it prepares you for the unexpected event. You exactly. Know, and, uh, that's going to be one of the big benefits. I'm very excited to see uh, 20, 20, 2021 coming up and see a lot of our residents coming to the simulation center to train clinical scenarios with simulation. Absolutely. It's going to be a big challenge for everybody, for residents and for tutors as well. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I'm looking forward. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you. Thank you.